Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Central Hampshire Veterans Services television show. Um, today I have a couple of special guests. We're going to have a conversation about something that you can learn about on the back of my newsletter. Um, I brought this along to let folks know I've dropped it off at a lot of um, the different towns. Just to remind everybody, now I can read it so I can't get it wrong. <laughs> Um, who live in Pelham, Amherst, Hadley, Williamsburg, Goshen, Cummington, Chesterfield, Worthington, Middlefield, Chester, or in the city of Northampton, including Leeds and Florence. Um, those are the towns that our office covers. And what I've done is probably every year I'm going to come out with a, essentially a newsletter that talks about various stuff that goes on, uh, that we do, that we can help with, and any other interesting tidbits. That, that is going on. In this issue, I talk, like I do every time, about our Chapter 115 benefits, about how we can financially assist people on fixed incomes, people who are retired, people who are on disability, or needing to get onto disability. We help with all that paperwork, filing with either the VA or with the state of Massachusetts, and there's lots of assistance that can be there. Um, assistance for fuel, housing costs, helping people with rent, rent arrearages, fuel arrearages. Um, there is some cash assistance and we also reimburse on a lot of medical expenses. So if you're a veteran, the surviving spouse of a veteran, the disabled child of a veteran and you're on a fixed income or you're out of work right now and you're looking for help, um, please contact our office. These are going to be in a few libraries around those towns. It's also in most of the Council on Aging Senior Centers. Um, and in this issue, like I say, we talked about that. We talk about the welcome home bonus. There's a little bit about our staff, which is going to be growing, and claims and other uh, veterans' benefits. Two other interesting little stories or little tidbits in there. One is the Building Bridges Veterans Initiative, uh, the ones that do uh, free lunch um, currently down in Northampton at the bowling alley twice a month uh, the first and third Wednesday um, and different places around Western Massachusetts they're now moving into Vermont and New Hampshire and out on the other side of the state they're gonna be on next month's show I believe uh, we haven't confirmed it but I believe they will um, the two people responsible for that program are gonna be that be on um, the other little tidbit is uh, there's a little description about the all veteran dragon boat team called um let me make sure i say it right veterans <laughs> dragon boat usa it's the first all veteran dragon boat team um, that exists in the country and it was pretty much started by the two guests i have with me here today uh, who i will introduce in just a little bit um, besides the um, benefits and all the stuff we talk about a couple of shows ago, we talked about both the VA closing. The good news is, is that got nixed. And um, at the current time, it looks like there's going to be no closure. Now, there's an election coming in November. Can another party take over Congress and try to revive it? Yes, it's possible, but they're running way short on time. If they did it, they'd have to do it within a month, and I don't think they're going to be able to pull that off. So we believe that the VA is now safe um, going forward. They are going to start breaking ground on a new one in Springfield um, to replace the Bond Street Center. It's going to be three times the size. It's going to be great. But this was also part of a bill that happened back in 2013-14 um, when they allocated the money to do that and to renovate the place in Leeds. Again, the argument was, why would you close a place you've just spent $108 million excuse me, $108 million on. Um, but uh, it looks like we've won that battle. So uh, that's really good news. Um, the soldier's home looks like everything is going forward with the new soldier's home. Uh, most of it's going to be paid for 65% by the federal VA system uh, and 35% by the state. Uh, there is a bill that has been introduced out of conference committee about the leadership of the um, two soldiers' homes, the one in Chelsea, the one in Hoyoke, and then any future ones that are built. Um, I have a lot of problems with it. Um, 
and wish they would can it and start all over again, but I don't think I'm going to have my wish. It's um, a lot of fluff, a lot of more bureaucracy, and not a whole lot that says that they're going to prevent the disaster from happening again uh, with whatever might come across. So uh, I was unpleased, but I am not an elected official, and I think now, looking back, I'm glad. <coughs> Anyways, so um, that's what's going on. It, you'll see it in the news coming up, and the bill will go. The only one who can amend it is the governor, and he's the one who hired the last guy, so I don't think we're going to get any luck that way. Anyways, okay, <laughs> enough of my opinion. Um, so uh, now with me are Anna and Donna. I met them several years ago. They came to our voice meeting, uh, voice standing for Veterans Outreach and the Community Engagement. And it's a group that we meet uh, monthly um, or close to monthly mm -hmm. and discuss all the different things in the veteran world. And they came and talked about an idea they had and they talked about a dragon boat. And I'm like, a dragon boat? I think I saw one of those ones. Well. What they decided they wanted to do was start a team. I can't tell you the whole story behind it, but they can. And I'm going to ask them to just do a brief history, because uh, I love the story, about how we ended up with um, a, the first all-veteran dragon boat team. So uh, Donna, Anna, whoever wants to tell the story about how, we, uh, how that all got started. Well, the dream, and it was a dream for a very long time to create our nation's first all veteran dragon boat team actually was probably, we gave birth to it maybe about seven, eight, nine years ago, way before we even launched our program. Yeah. Um, and, and our dream was based upon how we love the sport of dragon boating and all the benefits of the camaraderie, the unity that can spring forth when you have a team that's training and racing competitively. So we had this dream, um, knowing that we were going to start from zero. We did not have any funding. Um, it's a very expensive sport. So when there's passion combined with a dream, you are relentless in searching out anything that is around. And we went through the letter writing campaign to try to get funding. Um, but we ended up and we stumbled upon a um, brewery Hey. In uh, <laughs> Michigan, it was called New Holland Brewery, that was relaunching one of their beers. And their, the beer was Dragon's Milk. When we discussed it, it was Kismet. Um, what they were doing, their campaign was basically to um, create a marketing campaign again um, that would invite people to share a story. Um, and the premise is once you share a story, long enough and enough times it becomes a legend. So the campaign was actually called Share a Legend. So we wrote a story about our love for the sport of dragon boating and pretty much um, how we wanted to create an all veterans dragon boat team. So the national story t contest took place. We got into the um, finals. And then we got a phone call that said that we actually won the contest with 60% of the nationwide um, vote. The original uh, prize was $5,000. Um, a dragon boat can go anywhere from 10 to 13,000. Mm -hmm. um, but they were so taken by our dream, and it was unique, and it, nothing has ever been like that for a sustained team to meet year round, that they gave us an additional 5,000. Um, and so we took that 10,000 because part of our dream is to have veterans participate in this support, this, this sport, uh, never paying anything. Um, this is our way of saying thank you to veterans like yourself who are in the team. Yes. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we- are uh, not on time, but yeah, you know. But you are on the team. <laughs> um, and so that is how we started. We took our 10 grand and pr purchased a boat um, and it wasn't just any boat. We wanted, uh, in traditionally when you have a dragon boat, it's very Asian themed mm -hmm. um, with dragon scales on the side of the boat. We wanted to make it more personal for the veterans in our boat. So we came up with a very patriotic themed dragon boat 
It's a beautiful, beautiful boat. And every seal of the military. And every seal of yeah. branch yeah. of the of the military is on. Yeah, there. it is. It's a gorgeous boat. It's it a really beautiful. Is. It's yeah. it's the it's a unique one of a kind. Right. Not there's nothing else like that. Well, how long ago? See, now mm -hmm. I said we were at the voice meeting, and then I went, wait a second. 29? That was back at the World War II Club. That closed what two plus years ago pre-pandemic uh, pre-pandemic and i was already on the team and we'd already been doing a bunch when was it 2019 2019 we were yeah. born yeah 2019 right. because we won the contest 2018, 2018. we were right on the cusp of the new right. year okay. and we had to scramble quickly yeah because the money was coming in right so we had to find a home and we found out about voice and that's when we made our appearance and made our pitch um, and I thought, you know, I'll, I'll go to, you know, I can be a sub if you really need somebody because <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking nobody wants me on a team. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't do that. But um, I've been doing it and it's a blast and it really is teamwork. I, I guess, yeah, if you would explain to our audience exactly how it all operates and, and what we have to do. I mean, I know, I listen to you guys yell at me, so I do it, <laughs> but describing exactly how, to, how it is. Just to set the story straight, the veterans said they like, be, they're used to being yelled at, yes. so we had to learn how to be a little more forceful. Yes, Alan, but. I told him, I said, just <laughs> yell at us, we're used to it. But uh, for those who don't know what a dragon boat is, it looks like you can either call it a very large canoe or a miniature-sized Viking ship. It, um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's it right. does. Once okay. the head and tail are on, it does yep. look like a Viking ship. But it has 10 seats. It seats 20 people, two per seat. There is a drummer at the front, which is basically keeping the the beat for the the paddling sequence that's happening. Unless and Rick's the guy. <laughs> no, sorry. <coughs> Just <laughs> and, um, the, and there's a steerer. So if you imagine a gondola with a steerer standing in the back, so essentially that's what it looks like. The boat weighs about uh, 600 pounds empty. And when it's filled, it can be up to a, a ton. So it's a heavy boat. Um, the whole idea behind it is when you have 20 people um, sitting side by side in the boat, if they're paddling together with that power and doing it, um, it, it's like a symphony, essentially. The boat just rises out of the water and it, it sails. And it's, uh, you can speak for it better than we can. I mean, we love the sport, so mm -hmm. we're biased but there is an adrenaline and a force and a strength you can feel because you become part of that boat. But it doesn't work unless you're working together, which right. is why Don and I would back and forth with this idea about the whole thing about you need a team. You right. have to work together right. uh, to move this uh, monster of a vehicle. And, and veterans are used to working together on things, or military people are. I mean, that, that's all of our training, which is why I said Alan has to yell at us, because otherwise we think we're civilians until you start yelling at us. Yeah, and you, Alan, um, Steve keeps referring to Alan. Alan is the coach, um, so he's part of the triad of um, Don and I are co-trainers, so we help train the team as well. And we're bringing um, quite a few years of experience, having paddled... Um, for about 10 eight, years yeah. now, eight to 10 years now, um, and raced many races, and have had experience from very um, different dragon boat teams and various coaches. So we're bringing all of our experience and wealth to the team. And our, our original dream was to grow this, not just this one team in Western Mass, right. but to grow this nationally. And there are some other states that are looking at it and talking about it. Unfortunately, as we were growing our momentum, COVID hit. Right. So it sort yeah. of put the, um, it has slowed things down a bit, which is unfortunate. But um, I don't think I'm overstating when I say we love this team and the folks on the team. Uh, we would like to see more people come and try it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It, when, and it's funny, because I remember the first race we ever had, um, we seemed like we were doing well, but then the other team was going ahead of us and we, we all lost our composure, you know. <laughs> and as soon as you have people not rowing in unison, you have the caterpillar effect and you could even tip over because that time I thought we were actually going to go over. So um, very first race. Um, and now, you know, we had that competition last month and we it felt so good to just you could feel it when we were all doing it right. 
that thing is just gliding down the water yeah. and, and you just got to stay disciplined and it's really awesome it really is it's such a great feeling so yeah if people are interested please so it's at Hoyoke Rose which is on Jones Ferry Road 25 Jones Ferry Road in Holyoke mm -hmm. right um, it's also known as the Sue Ellen Panish uh, Recreation Center Okay. Um, so if you look at a, under either Holyoke Rose or that on 25 Jones Ferry Road, um, we are, it's the Connecticut River, and so that's where we practice. Uh, races happen um, through the summer season, and they're up and down the East Coast. They're really all across the U.S. Um, and in time, as you become very proficient, you actually compete nationally as well as internationally. And yeah. that's what we're hoping in time to bring the caliber of this team to that point to be able to do that. Yeah, it really is a lot of fun. Um, like I say, it's on our newsletter. I, I should probably put a link on our website, but you can also just call down my office and say, how do I do this? And we, we can explain it to you. But um, We do have a Facebook site. So okay, if anybody right. wants some visuals, it's yeah. Veterans Dragon Boat USA. If you go to Facebook, there are videos, there are photos from past races and workouts. So folks are still trying to get that sense of right. who and what it is we yeah, are and, and we do. Unfortunately, you'll see my white head. It seems to stand out in all the pictures that I had taken the other yeah, day. Yeah, I don't know if we have any photos of you juggling or balancing the paddle on your one. nose. or. <laughs> happen to have one. Yeah, it was a, yeah balancing. <laughs> but, and it is. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of camaraderie. And um, it's also exercise. I mean, you have yeah. to really build yes. up some endurance. You yeah. have to practice. You have right. to be in shape. And at one point, the VA gave you some money, um, a little bit at the mm -hmm. beginning, to, um, you know, because it was for VA health. But again, the pandemic hit, and everything just seems to have blown up. We were, um, we, I think, though, considering, and you were there, even though COVID, the pandemic did hit, and so we um, were limited as to what we could do, we still found ways to work throughout the fall and winter right. safely. We became very creative because the concern was when winter hit, everybody would go back to their little niches, and then yep. you may lose that um, connectivity. So I and gain a winter spread and gain a winter <laughs> spread, <laughs> but uh, and, and Donna came up with some great ideas as far as tracking um, heart rate and blood pressure. And one of the things, and I think you can talk to this, to speak to this too. Some of our veterans were letting us know that when they were having their follow-up medical appointments, their physicians noticed a an enormous change, a significant change right. in their health, where they were blood pressure was it no longer taking blood yes. pressure medication. They right. were losing weight. Um, those are good those outcomes. Those are big things. Those are big things because there's side effects from those. We also have participated at a UMass research study mm -hmm. um, on Fitbits, um, and six or seven of our veterans have um, actually been enrolled in their study. We also have um, Tufts Medical School has this division where they donate Fitbits, and so what we're starting to do is incorporate those kinds of things within the boat so that they can track. Uh, the benefits of what they're actually doing right. in, uh, in the boat. You guys know officially, who's our like youngest paddler? And who's our oldest? Our youngest is about 27 Nine. now, yeah. I think. Right. And our eldest, 74? Four, four or five. Yeah. yeah. We had one even older than that that he recently left. Um, he wanted to do other things. But yeah, we have a, it's a, no one is turned away. Right. You're a veteran, you have a seat in the boat. Yep. Um, male, female, uh, coming from different parts of Western Massachusetts. It's a very diverse. Yeah, um, and we can have like 30, 35 people because not everybody can show up sure. all the time. So if people want to learn it and get good at it, um, you know, there will always be an opportunity for people. To, yeah, we'd love to, to have, it. we'd love to grow to a point where we're filling two boats. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, indeed, indeed. Well, thank you both for you're welcome. Today. Thank I you for having us. It. Thank and you. Remember, folks, if you want to get some exercise, uh, you served one day in the military, you can be on the Dragon Boat and have a great time. Um, we really do. We have a lot of fun, and um, I look forward to it and seeing the people that I row with. Uh, we have a few people who, you know, this shoulder's bad, so they only mm -hmm. row on paddle on this side, you know, things like that. But uh, I can do both sides now. I can fix this <laughs> side. 
and we've become a family. Yes, and we have become a family for sure. And we actually have practice in about an hour. And a yes, half, we right? do. Yes. Yes. yes, we do. So um, that's today's show. Uh, again, if you have any questions about this, um, try to see if you can find this newsletter. I'm going to take it, make it a PDF, and put it on our website and try to get it on every other town website so you can look for it there. Uh, or you just call us. Uh, you can speak with me, Rebecca, uh, Jessica, and um, I just have a new hire. And he was on last month's show, Dan Nye. He is now my assistant VSO. So uh, he's joining our team. He's got two little girls, but maybe I can get him on the dragon boat a few times. It's true. That sounds like a good idea. All right. Thank you all for um, watching again, and we will see you next month. Thank you. Can you guys? Oh, water! That's up there! Ready for